something called recursion formulas. We are skipping over compound interest. Don't worry. It's in advanced functions. If you have me, I'll reteach it like you haven't seen it before, so don't worry that your education is missing out on something. It'll be okay. We thought it out. It'll be okay. Now, I need to warn you, recursion formulas are a little awkward at first. If you don't practice these at all, you have no chance whatsoever. Yeah? So I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I'm not going to oh, this is pretty easy. Th this is, but you've got to understand the symbols a little bit. Okay? So, first let's talk about something called e explicit formulas. And it's a new word, but it's what you've already seen. What we've been doing so far are called explicit formulas. So up to this point, our study of discrete functions has focused on determining sequences using a formula for the nth term. That is, we came up with formulas that look like this or like that to find the term number. You put the n in and that gives you the term. Or you put the term in and you can rearrange and play around to get the n. That's what we've been using so far. And you could use function notation. We didn't much, but you could use function notation. That's what we've been using so far. Those are called explicit formulas. It says here, if you want any term you want, just plug in the n and you'll get the term. Okay. Those types of formulas are known as explicit formulas. Notice these formulas can be used to find any term in a sequence without knowing the previous terms. That is, I can jump right to term 99 and never know what term 98, 97, 96 are. I can jump, right, jump ahead. That's nice, very powerful, very popular. That's the formulas we use most often. But you're going to have to trust me when I tell you that sometimes a different kind of formula will work better. So, in the formulas we've had so far, for example, if we wanted to find the eighth term we simply substitute 8 in for n and get the term. Nice. I'm not putting these things down. They are awesome most of the time. Most of the time, this is what you want. Okay. Introducing recursion formulas. There are certain applications and situations where this will work better. You are free to sort of sneer at these when you're learning about them going, why would you do this? It's one of those math things, right? There's sometimes in math you learn something like, why do I care? My daughter right now is doing factoring of numbers in her grade 5 class. They're taking 24 and they're breaking into 6 and 4. And then they're taking the 6 and breaking into 2 and 3. And they're taking the 4 and breaking into 2 and 2. And at the time, it's like, what, what, why do we care? Right? You can imagine what she's going through. She's like, I don't care. Irrelevant to me. But then later on, you find out, ooh, breaking numbers down and factoring them becomes very important. Yeah? It's a little like this. The first time through this, it's a little mysterious why this is important. So, although explicit formulas for sequences are very useful, it is sometimes, sometimes, more convenient to calculate a term in a sequence by using the previous terms. When we do that, it's called a recursion formula. A recursion formula is used to calculate a term in a sequence from one or more of the previous terms. Here's a recursion formula. We jump right in and talk about recursion formulas. Here's what this says. It says term one is five. That's like what we, yeah, yesterday. They gave you the first term. And then it says tn equals tn minus one plus two, which is completely mysterious. But to give you an idea of what this formula does, it says, okay, I'm going to just let n equals two. And there's nothing mysterious about my choice of two. I already have term one. If I wanted to find term two, I would make n equal to two. And so I would get then that t2 equals t n minus one. What's two minus one? One. Okay, so don't let that n minus one, like that n minus one all the way along has looked mysterious. It's not mysterious. Take n and subtract one, that's all. So I get term one plus two. This is what recursion formulas do. They say to find term two, take your first term and add two. Uh, oh, okay. See, it's got to use the previous term. That's the difference. It doesn't, I can't just jump to any term. I've got to take the previous term and add two. So I'm not trying to act like that's difficult. It's difficult to look at, but it's not difficult with what it's trying to say. It just says keep adding two. 
That's what you do to get this formula. So th what does this formula mean? It means first, first piece of information, the first term is 5. Yeah? That's what the recursion formula is saying. That's really easy. Yeah, you didn't need me for that. You could have you slept in today and avoided the lesson, if that's all I was going to tell you today. The second part is a little tricky, though. This is the part that's tricky for people. The second part says, to get other terms, Take the previous term and add 2. And if this was a school that I owned, a truly great school, I would stop that lesson there and say, go to lunch and just keep looking at that formula and looking at that sentence so you get that. It's really vital that you, it demystifies this whole situation. This TN equals tn minus 1 plus 2 looks really scary with all the weird crazy letters in there. And all it's saying is to get any term you want, take the term that's one less than that. Take the previous term and add 2. And once you read it that way, you're like, oh, well, recursion formulas are pretty straightforward, actually. It just gives you instructions on how to find other terms. That's all. I'm not expecting that you should find that easy at that point. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not, I don't misunderstand. I'm just saying there is a point with recursion formulas where you go, oh, I see what it's saying. Take a term and add two, that gives you the next term. That's all that's happening there. Do you have any questions there? Maybe you're in stunned silence. You're like, Let me see an example first. I think I know what you're saying, but I, I gotta see an example first. And, and that, that's correct thinking at this point. Don't get too carried away with the questions yet until you see what happens here. Notice recursion formulas always consist of at least two parts. First part. Information about the first term. And I'm not going to write some other stuff there I could, which is maybe it's about several of the first terms. That won't be surprising when we run into it. But I'll start with saying, usually recursion formulas, they give you the first term. Then they give you instructions on how to get next terms. That's all a recursion formula does. So you can't jump ahead with recursion formulas. That's its weakness. You want term 99? It's going to take a while. You got to do the you got to go jump to the second one, then the third one, then the fourth one. If you want explicit formulas, we're elevators. You press number nine, whoop, up to number nine. Recursion formulas are a set of stairs. We can get to floor nine, but we got to go to floor two, then to floor three, then to floor four. You're like, I don't like that. I don't like the stairs. I'm like, well, you sure like the stairs when there's a fire, don't you? You don't want to get in an elevator. If you follow my analogy, there'll be once in a while where it's like, uh-oh, better take the stairs. Yeah? In math. Okay? It's a good analogy. It's a, it's a beautiful analogy. Let's take the stairs, just to prove we can. More time there? I feel like I'm almost half done already. Here, an example that hopefully calms you right down and goes, oh, this isn't so bad. Consider the recursion formula T1 T equals 11. Boom. Gave us the first term. That's usually what will happen. It'll say, here's the first term. Then it'll give you instructions on how to find next terms. It says Tn equals Tn minus 1 minus 4. I'm going to write a sentence beside that to say what this recursion formula is saying to demystify it. It's going to take a little while so that you look at that and your brain is okay with it. But this says... To get each term, ooh, does anyone want to take a shot at it already? Who can already look at it and go, I know what it's saying. Kyle? Uh, the, use the previous term. Hold on, let me write that down. I'm not interrupting you. I just got to keep up, okay? Use the previous term.
Okay. And then uh, subtract four. Then subtract four. Perfect. So don't let the symbology intimidate you here. The recursion form is just telling you how to find next terms. Don't let the little n's and n minus ones get you all messed up. Any term you want, take the previous term, that's what the minus one is, and subtract four. Now what type of sequence do you think this recursion formula will give? If we're subtracting four every time? Arithmetic. Arithmetic. Why? Because it will be going down by 4. To which you say, can I just use the arithmetic formula then? Why would I want to use the recursion? Elevator, stairs. Yeah? Usually the elevator. Yeah? Well, we're usually going to take the elevator. That'll take us right to whatever floor we want. But once in a while, there's a fire in the building. Stairs. Write the first front. Write the first five terms of the sequence. I'll do the, the difficult one. 11. That's, that's, it's not supposed to be hard. I feel like I can go 7, because you subtract 4 to get to the next one. Then what? 3. OK, so using the recursion format. Now, sometimes it's not that easy. I've made a nice easy one to start out with. Sometimes you have to do the subbing. You might have to do this. I'll go off to the side to show what you would do if it was a little more difficult than that. This one, just subtract four every time. You might have to go, OK, term two equals term one minus four. You might have to write that out. And then you'd go, OK, term two equals 11 minus four. And I'm not saying I don't think you can subtract four. I think you can. I'm just saying if this formula is more complicated than this one, you might have to write it off to the side and think a little bit. Then you'd go, OK, term 3 is term 2 minus 4, which is 7 minus 4, which is 3. Yes, in this question, you don't have to do that work. But there might be questions where it's like, I just got to think about this for a second to understand what's happening. And just in case you're not caught up with your homework, let's go through this carefully. Determine an explicit formula for the sequence in two different forms. I don't know what that means. But OK, we'll, we'll just get an explicit formula. What is the explicit formula? Those of you who have been doing some homework, haven't been away on vacation. Ben! Uh, yeah. Hold on. Don't say it yet. This is important, right? Whatever he says next is important. You don't have the, what, what he says next, if you don't have that in the test, you are out of luck. Can't do these questions. Go. Oh, yes. Give me the formula. D. He is very smart. We know that. But that's not why he knows the formula. He knows the formula because he practiced a little bit. He's got it memorized. Now go. Tell me. Because that's the first term. That was fun. Sorry, I'm unhappy with my writing, so I'll just, you're on hold for just a second, Ben. You can listen to the music. Yeah, sorry, go. D? Negative four. Correct. Good. Could be used like that, but when they say two different forms, I don't know. I've done all this work on simplifying. We've been torturing you with simplifying for three straight grades. Maybe we should use our skills. Here's the skills. 11, bring the negative 4 out front. Multiply out the brackets. And then I end up with Tn equals 15 minus 4n. A little tidier to use. That's what they meant by two different forms. Now I have both. I got the elevator, I got the stairs, depending on what the question says. They gave me the stairs, I made the elevator. You want to jump to floor 99? Yep. Explicit jump stair, no problem. 
You want to find individual terms and the relationship between the terms as we go along here? You got the recursion. Just a little nudge of why we use recursion. Questions? What page is that? Four of seven. Over half done by my slides. What do you got? You guys are front and back? Three more examples? All right. Not bad for a Wednesday. Thank you. More time there? Questions? You have questions? Write an explicit formula and a recursion formula for this situation. Actually, a very good lesson because it reviews that stuff. When this gets given on a test, you get given a formula. Your first decision is, is it arithmetic or is it geometric? If it's neither of those, you can't do anything. My test will only have arithmetic and geometric. Can you look at it and just tell? Hopefully you can. Yeah, it doesn't take long. If it was arithmetic, it's going down by 9, then up by 18. It's not arithmetic. So it's got to be geometric or we can't do anything. Is there other types of sequences in the world? Yeah, just not in grade 11. Yeah, we're only going to do arithmetic and geometric. So what's the A? And what's the R? Negative 2. And if you didn't know how to get it, you take a term and you divide the previous term to figure out what it's multiplying by every time. And then maybe just to make sure you're like, I better check to make sure it works. Times by negative 2 is negative 6. Times that by negative 2 is positive 12. It's looking good. Times by negative 2, negative 24. You're feeling good. Yep, it's geometric. Carter says Tn equals Arn minus 1. Yes, he's very, very smart. But that's not why he knows the formula. He did some homework and practice, and it just imprinted in his brain. I didn't do any of the homework. I better memorize these formulas. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Better memorize the formulas. And now we just plug that stuff in there, right? Tn equals a. No, I said a. Wrote a when I was supposed to write 3. And then in here, negative 2 to the n minus 1. There's the explicit formula. The formula that will jump to any floor. You want to go to floor 80? Plug it in. Recursion. Two parts. I'll do the easy part, and then we'll see if there's a crazy volunteer who's ready to do the second part. T1 equals 3. So when we're doing recursion, we give some information about the first term. Sometimes about more than one term. And I'll give an example like that in a minute. But let's for now just keep our stick on the ice and say we just give some information about the first term. Then I got to give some information about how to get the next terms from that. Let's do it in words first. To get to the second term from the first term in words, what's happening? You're going to take that previous term and multiply by negative 2. Do you want to take a shot then at the recursion formula? Maybe. Negative 2 times the previous term. How do we write previous term using this notation? Oh, ben, or, the e. ben had his hand up. I looked at you and said, Ben, Kyle, what, what is the previous term? Yeah, oh, Kyle, sorry. No, I, I messed you up because I saw Ben's hand over top of your head. So I said Ben, but I meant by pointing at Kyle. Kyle, tell me. Is it uh, the Tn minus 1? Yes. And maybe for some of you that was a breakthrough moment in all this to go, oh, Tn minus 1 just means the previous term. What, if you're talking about Tn, Tn minus 1 is one term less than that. Is recursion easier than explicit? It might be when you really get good at it. If you spent equal amount of time working on this and on this, there might be a decision where you're like, oh, recursion, you just say what's happening to the next term. You don't need some crazy formula. You just say what's happening. Okay? I'm not arguing for one or the other. It's truly elevator and stairs, different uses. Did I answer the question? Let's get good at that, folks, for this test. Write an explicit formula, did. And recursion formula, did. OK, whew. Yeah, because then if at the end it said, and then find the first, and then find the 80th term. Hmm. Oh, that's a good question. If I, then I said, find the 80th term, which equation would you use? You'd use this one. That's to jump to any term. If you tried to find the 80th term with this, it'll do it. 
but you better set aside an hour or so to get up the stairs. You'd learn a lot about the terms as you were going, though. Wait, can't, can't you just do 81, though? I don't really get that far. To get the 80th term, I would need the 79th term, which I don't have. You go, oh, I'll get the 79th term. To get the 79th term, you'd need the 78th term. So you got to go up the oh, stairs no. to get there. You, get, you need all the terms to get there. Whereas the explicit formula says, no, no, just press the button on the elevator that, that you want. You want 80? Just put an 80 in there. Boom, I'll give you the answer. Okay? I always thought I meant like term, like the like literal number of the term. Oh, no, this is whatever the value of the term is, and the n is the term number. The fifth term, the eighth term, the fiftieth term. No, no O's. There's no O's. No O's. I'm just kidding. Note the recursion formula can be used. We can use function notation if you want. And if this confused you, you just go, okay, F at 1, they're talking about term 1. F at 2, they're talking about term 2. Fn, they're talking about Tn. So don't let that intimidate you when they use function notation. It's just another way to write it. Notice this one gives the first two terms. So that's what I was saying before. It's possible that instead of just giving the first term, maybe they'll give you the first couple of terms. They'll give you, uh, maybe they'll give you the first four terms or something like that, and then an equation of how to get the rest of the terms. So write the first five terms of the sequence. Okay. To help out, just in case that the notation's messing you up, I'm going to write, okay, T1, which is F at 1. What is the first term? What? They just gave that to me. Minus one, sorry. sorry, minus one. Oh, yes. Fooled me, too. Minus one. So then they want five terms, so I'm going to do the second term. Second term is f at 2 in this question. What's the second term? Number one, because they gave the first two. That's not supposed to be too hard. That's just a lesson in terminology, getting more used to what these letters mean. Term two equals F2. Now we need some help. To get the third term, now you've got to take the stairs. So you go, okay, let's just take this equation and let N equals three. That is not a mysterious choice. I'm just saying, I'm at the second floor. I'd like to get to the third floor now. And on the third floor, I just sub n equals 3 in this equation, and f at 3 is equal to 3 times f at 2. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe I understand. Get ready. Somebody get ready in words to say what's happening here after that. f at 3 is 3 times the second term. What was the second term? 1. Whoa. My third term, which we're calling f at 3, was equal to 3. Is anyone ready, though, to go, now that I've subbed it in once, I know what this formula is doing. It's going up by 2, he says. It might be. Let's do one more term to find out. I'm going to do f at 4. How am I going to get f at 4? I let n equal 4. I go to the equation and go, okay, make n 4. So that says 3 times f at 3. What was f at 3? What was the third term? 3. Answer 9. Term 4, that is f at 4, was 9. What's the formula doing? Oh, it's multiplying by 3. After the first two terms, to get other terms, we just take the previous term and multiply by 3. Now I'm ready to just write the next one. So it is possible at some point to go, I don't need your little formulas anymore. I know what's happening here. Okay? I'm not suggesting you do that. Maybe you should do this. You should go, okay, f at 5 is 3 times f at 4, which this is 3 times the 9, which is 27. How do the first two terms work? This is a very weird sequence because it doesn't follow the rule the whole way. 
it starts off doing one thing and then switches. Recursion formulas, that, that's the power of recursion formulas. They don't have to follow the rule all the way along. They might change things as they go along. Well, it's one of the powers of recursion formulas is it might start off with some terms to get started, then once it gets going, it multiplies by three every time. So it's, it's just putting our toe into other kinds of formulas here. The nice thing is you'll have the formula. You'll have the set of stairs. You'll have the, here's how you get to the next term. Okay. So you can't make like an explicit one? Perfect sentence. That's a perfect sentence. This particular formula, you couldn't make an explicit one for it because it doesn't follow the same rule all the way along. You'd have to use a recursion formula, which is a slight hint as to why recursion formulas exist. Sometimes there's a formula, there's a, a sequence which doesn't follow a nice, tidy rule all the way along. I don't really get it, though, because in the recursion, it's like, you said like a staircase, but like it doesn't seem like it because you could just put any number and, and, and that will tell you what it is. Oh, he says, can't we just go to any floor? So let's try it up here, up in the corner here. Let's try and use what I've described as the stairs to jump to floor 80, okay? So he says, just, can't you just let n equal 80? And the answer is yes. I can put in n equals 80, and I get f at 80 is 3 times f at 79. You don't know what f at I don't know what f at 79 is. Right? That's why it's a set of stairs. I've got to be at level 79 before I can get to level 80. Oh, okay, well, I just need 78. I'm like, I know. Then you just need 77. Yeah, I know. And you've got to come all the way down and get back to here. So you can make a formula for it. You just can't get the actual answer. Other questions? One last example. How do you know which one to use? Ah, no, that's a good question. Um, if you want to jump to a specific term, you need the explicit. That's as good as answer as I'll give for now. Other than that, at this point, you're going to have to rely on the questions to ask you which one it's looking for. Oh, you won't until you make the list. That's why all, so many of the questions are list the first five terms. Okay. You might be stuck with it. Even I. Let's say a random formula came up. You made up some crazy recursion thing. I'd look at it and go, hold on. Let me get the first five terms. Then I'd be able to answer your question. So even I would be stuck with that. Unless that was familiar to me. Unless I saw it and I recognized it. Which is possible. But more likely I'd just go, let's just write down a few terms here and see if we can see what pattern's going on. I, I misunderstood your question. That was good. Oh, and this, is, this relates to your question, I think, too, this final question. Consider the following problem. Find the 78th term in this sequence. I could make a recursion formula for this. I could make a, well, what is it? Is it arithmetic or is it geometric? geometric. It's geometric. I could make a geometric. Would you want the explicit formula or the recursive formula? To get, you want the explicit. Explicit. The explicit formula. can jump to any term easily. That's its power. And at this point, it's OK if you think, well, I'm going to use explicit all the time. I think it's way better all the time. You're wrong, but it's hard to explain right now without setting fire to the apartment building. You, know? you set the fire to the apartment building, you're like, oh, I don't want explicit anymore. I don't want to jump to floor 80. I just want to go down the stairs and get out of the building. You know? So that's what. It's not a perfect analogy, but it gives you an idea. It's not clear exactly why we would want recursive. Okay. Is that it? How'd I do? Well, that's it for the video, isn't it?